What I'd like to do is, uh, so we'll begin right now. We're going to be ready to begin. Uh, and we are here for the public uh, hearing related to the FY 2020, 2021 budget. Uh, and I want to welcome everyone and good evening. As a preliminary matter, uh, as we do at all our meetings, we will confirm attendance. And Nan, would you please confirm the members and persons that are on the agenda and can be uh, heard, uh, can hear us? Mr. Castellanos? Ms. Capola? Here, present. Mr. Ford? Present. Yep. Mr. Scatling? Present. Mr. Nicholson? Present. Mr. Satellite? Present. Present. Okay, perfect. Uh, this is Mayor Tom McGee. I'd like to say good evening and thank you for joining us. This open meeting of the Lynn School Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law uh, to have all meetings in a public ex publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public, public bodies are allowed and encouraged to um, participate remotely. The order, which is find, uh, you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting on the city website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Um, only uh, public, uh, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. Uh, the, only the budget portion of this meeting will be open to the public uh, participation per Chapter 71, Section 38N of the Mass General Laws. Participants can join in by uh, using the Zoom link or the, the included phone numbers that are posted on the city and school website. Additionally, this meeting can be viewed on the local cable channels, Channel 3 for Comcast and Channel 37 for Verizon. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that the other people may be able to see you and take, not, uh, take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by that recording, by this recording. We are now turning to the first agenda item on uh, first item on the agenda. Uh, I'd like to uh, cover some ground rules uh, to be effective and clear conduct of our business uh, and ensure accurate meeting minutes. As the chairman, I will in introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, we'll go down the line of members. Uh, inviting uh, any names, any name by and by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Uh, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Uh, for any response, please wait until the chair yells the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Uh, if members wish to engage with discussion with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourselves. Uh, and as votes are taking, and this will uh, be in the later meeting, every early uh, every vote take every vote taken in this meeting, it will be conducted by a roll call. And uh, at this point, um, I'm opening up the public hearing for those who wish to speak in favor of FY 2021 budget. As I said, uh, there you can raise your hand, or there is a phone number that you can call in uh, to. It should be on the screen, um, and you can call in. Uh, please raise your hand, and, and again, you can, uh, and we will call you by name. Each speaker will have three minutes. Once all the questions from individuals on the Zoom have been answered, we will move to the individuals uh, calling in by phone. Please unmute yourselves when you ask your question. Uh, and again, uh, when you when you speak, as we go to this, please state your name and your address uh, so that we can um, take your uh, comments and keep them uh, appropriate for the minutes of the meeting. Uh, with that, um, uh, please unmute. Uh, <clears throat> with that, the meeting is uh, open to the public who wish to speak. Uh, again, each speaker has three minutes. To again, I am opening the public hearing for those who wish to speak in favor of the 2021 budget. Uh, you can raise your hand for participating via Zoom, and we'll call you by name. Each speaker will have three minutes. 
Once all the question the individuals on the Zoom have been answered, we will move to individuals calling in by phone. Uh, again, we are the public hearing. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak in favor of the FY 2021 budget? I am open, again, this is open for a public hearing. And again, I am asking to, to uh, for those who are on or are calling in, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the fiscal year 2021 budget? Again, I will repeat, uh, we are here for the FY 2020 budget public hearing portion of tonight's meeting. Are there anyone here that would wish wishes to speak in favor of the fiscal year 2021 budget? Is there anyone that is uh, uh, I'm not seeing anyone or any phone calls that have come in? Uh, I close the public hearing for those who wish to speak in favor of the 2021 budget. Uh, I will now open up the public hearing for those who oppose the fiscal year 2021 budget. Please raise your hand for those participating via Zoom, and we will call you by name. Each speaker will have three minutes. Or you can call in, as the number is listed as well. Once all the questions from the individuals on Zoom have been answered, we will move to the individuals who are calling in by phone. Uh, when you uh, are ready to speak, unmute yourselves and ask your question. And again, uh, recognize yourself with your name and your address. Is there anyone who has uh, reached out to speak on opposition to a fiscal year 2021 budget? Again, I open up the public hearing for those who oppose the fiscal year 2021 budget for the schools this year. Um, again, if you're, you would like to speak, raise your hand in Zoom, via Zoom, and we will recognize you. Uh, if there is, uh, once the Zoom, those who would wish to participate in Zoom have been accommodated, uh, we will take the, uh, those who are calling in and we will take those uh, individuals uh, by phone and questions that they have. Again, is there uh, anyone who is here wishing to speak in opposition to the fiscal year 2021 budget? Again, I will um, ask uh, for those who are following tonight, if you would like to raise your hand via Zoom, if you are here in opposition to fiscal year 2021 budget, uh, please uh, raise your hand. And if you are calling in, please call in. And after those who have uh, indicated they would like to ask a question via Zoom have been responded to, you will then have a chance to ask your question by, by phone. Uh, again, are there anyone here who is wishing to speak in opposition to fiscal 2021 budget? Seeing, uh, at this point, seeing no, uh, no one that has reached out, either by Zoom or by phone, I now close the public hearing uh, on the fiscal year 2021 budget. That being the only uh, bit of business related to that, I'm open to a few minutes to take a break, or we can go um, directly into the meeting for tonight. And again, I will start from the beginning uh, hey, uh, yes, John. The meeting is supposed to be seven o'clock. We have to do it at seven. Okay, so uh, we 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 stay on till seven o'clock, John, and then. Uh, no, no, you can close the you can close the public hearing. Okay. The uh, the meeting cannot start until seven o'clock. Okay. Motion to close the public meeting, Mr. Mayor. Motion. Thank you. Thanks for that, John. Thank uh, there's, you. A, there's a motion by uh, Member Satterwhite and seconded by Member. Uh, Capola uh, will require a roll call. Mr. Cassianis? Mr. Cassianis? Putting his thumbs up, vote yes. Okay. Ms. Capola? Yes. Ms. Ford? Yes. Ms. Daly? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Sadwhite? Yes. Ms. Manity? 
Yes. It's uh, we have about, we have about fifteen minutes, so I'll see you all returning in a you know ten or fifteen minutes, and we'll get right into the. Have seven a good one. Meeting. We'll be ready at seven o'clock. Thank you all. I'll see you in a few minutes. Is that correct, Dr. Tawala? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Uh, we're ready to go. I'm going to jump into the uh, regular meeting. Again, welcome to the first regular meeting of the Lynn School Committee for Thursday, January 14th, 2021. Uh, good evening. Uh, as a preliminary matter, we will confirm attendance both for the members as well as those uh, persons that are will be participating in including the administration and uh, the financial team as well as um, attorney my house. So with that, I would, uh, Ann, would you please confirm the members uh, that are participated on the agenda and present and can hear us. She's muted. Yeah, Nan, it's on mute. I won't talk Nan, to Nan, <laughs> Thank you, Nan. We can yeah. hear you. Am I all right? Yes. Can someone tell me if I'm all right? You can hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Cassianis? Present. Ms. Capola? Present. Mr. Ford? Present. Ms. Gailey? Present. Mr. Nicholson? Present. Mr. Satterwhite? Present. Mr. McGee? Present. And observing is uh, Dr. Tutwiler, uh, um, Ms. Ms. Powers, Ms. Rosario, Ms. McHugh, Ms. Jules, and Attorney Myhouse. Present. Are they? Present. Great. Thank you, Nan. Okay. Uh, this is Mayor Tom McGee, and I'd like to say good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. This open meeting of the Lynn School Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to meet, mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting on the city website allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so as long as the reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public asset access does not ensure public participation unless this participation is required by law. Um, this meeting, uh, participants uh, can join in tonight's meeting uh, via the Zoom link. Additionally, this meeting can be uh, the, the viewed on the city website. Additionally, this meeting can be viewed on local cable channels, channel three for Comcast, channel 37 for Verizon. Please note that this meeting is being recorded, that some attendees are participating by, via video conference. Accordingly, please, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to share, screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by this recording. We're not turning to the first, before we turn to the first item on the agenda, uh, I wanna cover some ground rules. Uh, we've had, gone over these before, but I'm, I will go over them again. For effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. As chairman, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go, get on the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember uh, to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking, and remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourselves. Finally, each vote taking, if taken at this meeting tonight will be conducted by a roll call. Uh, and with that, I would like to ask everyone, I know Don Hussey's uh, is here uh, on the screen and the uh, room with the flag in it is also here. I'd ask that you join me, rise and join me in a salute to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, 
one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I would also like you to stay standing, please, and join me in a moment of silence in memoriam for George Harmer, who, retri who retired as supervisor of maintenance, who passed away on January 9th of 2021. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Everyone has an agenda. And so uh, the first piece of business is uh, new business uh, and the discussion of the date of return for high needs students is the first agenda item on the list. Dr. Tutwiler, I'm uh, could you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the committee will recall uh, the meeting that we had on October 28th. Feels like a really long time ago, but at that meeting, uh, a proposal was made to uh, invite for in person services um, uh, select groups of high need special education students uh, and our SLIF students, uh, students with limited. Uh, or uh, limited formal education or interrupted formal education at the high school level uh, beginning January 19th, right? So a proposal was made on October 28th, looking ahead to January 19th. Uh, I think it was a, an, an educated guess as to when we thought uh, it would be safe uh, for us to do so. Um, but we are much closer to that date now uh, and it is the uh, strong opinion of both, both our own uh, nursing department and the city's uh, health department that um, right now is not the appropriate uh, context uh, for in-person learning uh, for those groups that we intended to, to invite back. Uh, I'm not sure if folks have been able to see it. It just came out uh, the 14 day average um, positive um, uh, for po percent positive for Lynn right now is uh, 14.46 uh, and the average um, number of positive cases daily uh, is 128 looking back 14 days and I think for me personally uh, the data um, the, the element of today's data that was released that was perhaps the most concerning as we think about in-person learning is the group that was impacted the most over the past 14 days is those in the age group zero to 19. Uh, and so that's all available on the mass COVID dashboard. Uh, and so what I'm asking uh, this evening uh, is for formal approval from the school committee uh, to push that date back. Um, our thought was no sooner than February 1st, although uh, that could change uh, as well. But I. I, I, we selected that date. It's two weeks later than the uh, than the 19th. Uh, so we really want to sort of watch this on a week by week basis uh, and trust and follow uh, the direction of our uh, the medical authority in the city. Um, but uh, as we we near February 1st, make a decision as to whether or not uh, it needs to be pushed back beyond February vacation. Member Castellanos and then Member Satterwhite. Thank you, Dr. Tatwiler, for um, for the information that you just shared. So, so would we be so? And I know we had access tested scheduled for one twenty five. Um, would we be looking to postpone be, due to the risk? Because I, I feel like there is a concern um, with testing in person, and that right now it seems like that might not be the safest road to go. And and I, I don't know if that's if postponing isn't the plans or is that something that we're all um, looking to, I know we're doing a week to week base, but what are we looking for, for access testing? And I, and I understand the logic behind, you know, putting the, the date at that in February, you said February 1st, just to kind of. At, at, at the earliest. At the earliest, February yeah. 1st. Okay. Yeah, so so uh, thank you for that question about uh, the access tests for English learners um, in our plan again hatched 
boy, that was probably, you know, late November, early December. Um, our original plan was to begin actually uh, sooner than the 25th. Um, I believe it was the 19th, the week of the 19th or the 20th, excuse me, when we uh, were planning to begin. Uh, we pushed that to the 25th. Uh, we've now decided uh, to push uh, access testing to begin March 1st. Uh, and that was communicated to principals today upon my conversation with um, the, the city's health director. Uh, and to be clear, you might say, well, why March 1st uh, for access testing, but you're looking to bring high needs special education students and SLIF students in much sooner. Uh, you, you know, we just have to remember the, the size of the, the, the students who would be invited in. Uh, our plans for the high needs special education students and SLIF students, um, you know, that impacts uh, about 300 students. Um, when we talk about access testing, our plan for the 25th involves students in grades three through five across all of our, all 19 of our elementary schools. So it's a much larger group of students uh, on site uh, for, for, you know, essentially half a school day. And so um, we thought it prudent to, to push that until um, uh, well beyond February vacation, uh, two weeks beyond March 1st. And, and I also want to just say really quickly that, um, you know, we were um, we were sort of uh, really waiting as close as we could to the 25th to make that decision uh, because the spring gets really crowded as it gets as we look at state mandated testing, none of which I'm excited about, but have to do. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're thinking deeply about the student experience and trying to protect how much of their time is eaten up, you know, with these sorts of uh, experiences. But, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll plan as best we can, but we'd be looking at starting it um, in early March. And, and just one final point, Dr. Tutwiler, because I think you hit on it. These are state, this is state mandated testing that has been part of a larger discussion related to those tests. So this is uh, the state decision to continue to require that test. So I think that's an important point. Um, thank you, Dr. Tatlano. Member Satterwhite. Thank you. And then Member uh, Nicholson. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tatlano. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with uh, your decision to, to postpone um, the uh, bringing of the uh, uh, SPICE and the special education, high-risk special education students in. As a special education attorney, you you know my passion is, is, is with those students. Um, and... Um, uh, you know, obviously, I hear from many, many parents that, that believe that uh, these high risk students, uh, you know, need these uh, in person uh, sessions with, with, with our educators. Mm -hmm. But it really is a balancing act. And this is something that you're, you're learning to, uh, to really live with on a day to day basis. Um, I, I, I just got a call yesterday from um, a closing that I did just two weeks ago for a family that uh, moved to Boston uh, because the mother was uh, doing chemotherapy at MGH. Uh, the husband who just uh, retired maybe a couple of years ago from GE visited his brother who was on dialysis and he had COVID. He gave it to mm -hmm. the husband and the husband passed away. Oh. Uh, he was in the hospital for four days, but it, it's, it's crazy how it's spreading substantially and people don't understand the, the obviously the consequences are death, uh, you know, but it, it just doesn't, you know, you know, it doesn't always have to happen at a party or at an unsanctioned event. It could be just visiting someone that doesn't know that they have it. So, you know, that's, that's my big worry. And, and that's, that's where I think your balancing uh, needs to come into to, to play. But I, I strongly suggest that we continue to, to heed the advice of the, um, the city's board of health as well as the, the nurses in, in our uh, department. And we, we have to be um, uh, diligent with, with bringing even 300 kids um, with educators back into our school. So I like the fact that you're not um, sticking to these dates that we're, we're uh, you know, putting forth and that you're, you're taking into consideration uh, the, the data and information that, that's provided as we get closer and closer to these, these deadlines. They're very liquid. They've been that way. It seems like uh, since last March, sure. and and um, you know, that, 
it, it's discouraging at times, but I think that we see a light at the end of the tunnel, and and that's that's what's what's important. But please keep that in mind. Um, I I've been saying this, you know, since last year. Um, if we can use buildings that we know uh, have the space and, and and the capability of, of of handling these students in a safer environment, that'd be great. I know Marshall's a, a new newer school. Um, you know, we, we we some you know I think that it's it's important to to, to think about the space uh, as opposed to just the the bodies of, of students that we're bringing together. Thank you, Member Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tallweiler, for that for that update. Um, I, I I totally agree that we have a responsibility to be following the recommendations of, of our public health experts in, in in a moment like this with dealing with disease that's this is deadly in, in in a community that's been hit as hard as we are. Uh, and so are are certainly faced with the the urgency of that. You know, at the same time, I, I know that we all know that there there are real trade offs, uh, and and the amount of uh, learning that our students are are uh, missing out on, and and those trade offs are just so particularly acute for this group of students, which is why they were selected in the first place to be coming back. Um, and so I know that we all share the goal of, of trying to get them back as soon as possible, that it's when it's safe to do so. Um, I, I, I understand that we have been working to try to, you know, we're, we're all hoping that the numbers will go down after the, uh, post holiday surge. And I, and I think, you know, there, 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 there's some reason to be optimistic about that. And I, I also understand that, uh, we're not, we're not just waiting for numbers to go down that we're also proactively sort of pursuing other other options in, in ways to, to create opportunities for students to come back. And I think, you know, there's a, the, 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 the district, my understanding is that the district is in pretty, is pretty well prepared for, for things like um, uh, PPE uh, for, for, we're talking about the number of students we're talking about, you're going to be well prepared for, for social distancing. The other, the other key strategy there and, and, and you know, in, in hoping to be able to have better news by the time we get to February 1st is, is, is around testing. So I was wondering if you could give an update as to uh, what, what, what options we have available to us there. Yeah. So, I, you know, there, there's some districts um, have already, well, actually, before I speak to that, I, I just want to um, uh, echo and, and, and sort of affirm your, your comments around readiness. Um, I mean, we have the stuff. We started buying the stuff. Uh, late last spring and during the summer in preparation for in-person uh, in-person services and uh, we still have it a lot of it uh, and so and we continue as you know through uh, various uh, donation agenda items uh, in this space uh, continue to receive um, or benefit from the generosity of uh, of, of the corporate world and and, and other folks who, who really want to uh, see Lynn students serve well uh, as it relates to testing, uh, I think it was, it was pretty big news last week that uh, the state is planning to provide um, a, a, a testing program, a pooled testing program um, available for, for districts who are interested across the state, uh, free of charge for six weeks, and then uh, there'll be a charge thereafter that I understand is a minimum of $5 per person per test, minimum being key, because I've heard, um, you know, there could be as much as $15 uh, per person per test. Uh, and so uh, we, there was a webinar on the, on the topic on Tuesday. Uh, our nursing team was on that webinar. We've completed the uh, interest survey to be um, counted among those who are interested. Uh, and then we're also exploring some other avenues uh, that, you know, could yield uh, a scenario where we are, you know, have sort of the same um, situation that the state is offering, but might be a little bit more cost effective. Um, so we we are on it. Um, and, you know, Kathy McNulty, I tease her because, you know, I think when she sees my name on that caller ID, she, you know, there's the eye roll. Uh, uh, we, we, we talk a lot, but um, uh, she and her team are, are, are on this, um, you know, 
with with uh, with with a, with a high degree of interest, um, and we're determined to be part of that or to have that be part of um, our uh, in person um, experience. Got it. No, I appreciate that. I mean, I think that's just such a key priority to find a way to at least get some students back. Um, and the, the other part I wanted to ask about is is around communication. You know, I, I, I'm sure that uh, families were optimistic or at least hoping for, for better news on, on, the, on the 14th, and I'm sure they will be again on the 1st. Um, it just, you know, I, I, for this group, it's a smaller number, and so I understand that we're able to communicate more efficiently, efficiently which is good. Um, I also hope there's an opportunity uh, for for some for some exchange, you know, and some some information, because this is about trade offs. We're, we're we're weighing on the one hand the risk to public health of the community, um, and then on the other hand the individual sacrifices that the families are making, and 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 that uh, trade off is being made across uh, you know every activity in the city, and 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 what 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 uh, activities are, are, uh, necessary to continue or are able to continue and what activities need to, need, we're asking people to sacrifice. Um, and so I think, uh, offering the special education families, uh, uh, some, some insight into those trade-offs and ability to, to share the, the, the pain of their sacrifice as, 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 as part of, uh, you know, uh, keeping, our our ties together as a community, I think, is is helpful. And and you know, if we're going two weeks at a time, uh, which I think is great. I mean, I, I appreciate that everyone's willingness to to take a look at this as the as the situation changes. There should be um, plenty of opportunity to have that kind of uh, back and forth. Um, and 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 I think it will uh, be useful in in getting everyone on the same page. That's feedback well taken. Member Ford. Yeah, uh, Mr. Tellweiler, just one quick question. The MCAS is still imminent. Is there any talk at all or any possibility that we're going to be limited to a quarter of the school year? And to, to spend that time in this particular year teaching to a test, I think is ludicrous. I, I don't know. Is anybody looking into that? I think everybody's looking into it. Uh, and I think that, that uh, you know, I can't speak for anyone else. I can only tell you how I feel. Uh, and I uh, have been, you know, not silent about this. I'm not happy with the, the fact that, you know, potentially um, students first experience back on site this year will be to take a test. Um, and it really shouldn't be that way. Um, there are students who haven't set foot in a building, you know, geez, in about uh, six, seven weeks, you know, in a year, <laughs> you know, and that's going to be their first experience when they come back. Um, and so, you know, th this is, you know, above us. Uh, it, it, if it was up to me, uh, this would be an easy conversation. Um, I mean, we, we're, we're, you know, planning to make a presentation uh, in, the, in a future meeting about um, iReady, which is a, an assessment, a local assessment that will help us uh, sort of uh, determine where students are and make plans to address uh, any any gaps that there that, that might be there. Uh, if you ask the commissioner, and he said this, so this is not me telling secrets, uh, he'd say that the MCAS is going to be a powerful tool for the state to sort of see, you know, from their perspective where students are. So they can align resources and help, uh, you know, or get resources and help uh, to where it's needed most. I'd say, you know, I, I think I know we need, you know, what I mean, and I think I know, um, you know, what the path forward should look like. Uh, so he's gotten. I've been on many calls uh, with the, the commissioner, uh, urban superintendents network. Uh, he's gotten that feedback. And in many ways, or in some ways, it's even out of his hands, right? Because MCAS is anchored in law. Uh, and so, um, you know, they have that feedback. Uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens uh, come springtime. But right now, 
uh, it's on and uh, we're planning for it. Thank you. There's been, and just to follow up on that, and then I'll go to Member Satterwhite, there's been numerous, um, uh, a number, more than a number of um, um, leaders, school, school leaders, superintendents that have continued and consistently uh, made a strong case for this year not having to take these tests. And uh, I think the points well taken, Dr. Tutwiler, the federal government has continued to uh, require these these testing uh, under the circumstances. It does not make any sense to me as well. But uh, the same with the excess test. Um, but um, there's been strong, very strong arguments have made about putting these tests off, including myself and many other mayors. So um, just want to be, uh, you know, it's a great question uh, and it's a great point, uh, particularly when we're looking at uh, trying to make these tough decisions. And I think we've all articulated pretty well that this is really, you know, the choices here are, are none, of, none of the choices are, are, are good choices at all. You know, going to you know, trying to get kids back to school, the health consequences, you know, the, the continuing, uh, you know, I was on a call related to the COVID, uh, 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 you know, I'm on several a week, uh, but the, um, we were on with a, a number of, um, leading doctors the other day and they there's no clear evidence of it but they strongly believe that the um, the more transmittable virus is in massachusetts it's probably in every state in the country and is really spreading and we're seeing the spread here uh, the other data reflects uh, uh in terms of contact tracing uh the largest place right now in the state where the uh, numbers are growing is in child care over 20 percent of the cases are coming through child care so it is it is uh clearly a health challenge and, a, and an education challenge with no answers to no right answers to try and get to where we need to be. So, um, but again, the testing, the testing clearly should be on the back burner from my perspective as well. Member Satterwhite, then Member Gately. Thank you. And, and uh, just to, to, you know, continue on the topic that uh, Member Ford brought up. Uh, you know, the, the stress doesn't just lie with the students either. Um, I can only imagine uh, how our educators are, are going to feel having to give uh, such a test um, at, at, during this, the, these times. Um, there's a thing going on on Facebook, uh, Dr. Tutwiler, about parents being able to waive out of their student uh, children having to take the MCAS. Is this something that you're, you're seeing on your end? Um, it is not, it's not come to me. I don't know if, um, Kim or Deb, uh, are hearing anything specifically. I, I heard from one, one principal that they received a letter from a parent. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, uh, getting around there. Um, and, uh, they're encouraging each other to, 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 to do such a thing. Um, and you know, what I would say to the, to the federal government and to the, to the state officials, would be we can we can do the same measurement next school year. Doesn't have to be this school year, especially not after this year that we've had. So um, I, I would just uh, keep that uh, be aware of, of what's going on with regards to that, uh, Dr. Tutwiler. Thank you, Member Gately. I just think with the new administration coming into um, our federal government that we may have somebody that's in charge of education that may have some some real knowledge on an education, Dr. Tawila, and I'm very hopeful that that person will use rationale and say, I would rather see our kids learning in a classroom than taking a test to show what they learned through remote learning. So I'm very optimistic and I'm keeping my fingers crossed and thoughts and prayers. So just keep us, you know. And, uh, and, and to follow up on that point and the new administration coming in on the 20th, uh, President elect Biden is on uh, a national uh, address tonight at seven o'clock with a $1.9 trillion proposal for, which will have hundreds of billions of dollars focused clearly on, on schools uh, and, uh, and uh, three hundred and fifty billion dollars actually for cities and states, which is a is a huge uh, piece of what has been talked about for months. Uh, so uh, both addressing vaccinations, which have begun in the city, so we have at least taken a step forward. I was at the uh, tech the other day to see first responders starting to get their uh, vaccinations. Uh, so hopefully with uh, the uh, proposal tonight, 
uh, focus clearly on on the pandemic and vaccinations, but just as importantly on children and schools and education. That um, that there'll be a different direction coming on January 20th with uh, much more um, forceful uh, uh, action and focus on on these issues. So uh, that that address was uh, for seven tonight. So as we're on the, our school committee meeting, hopefully there is a the proposal that we're uh, addressing many of the things we're talking about will be addressed with uh, the new administration come next week. Can I make a motion? Be begin beginning next week. Uh, Member Sadaway. Can like I make, make a motion? motion? Member Sadaway. Thank you. Uh, I make a motion to approve uh, Dr. Tutwiler's request to uh, bring uh, the uh, uh, special needs students and the SPICE students uh, in uh, for February 1st. Motion, uh, is there a second? Second. Sorry. That's not why I did I mess it up? At the earliest. At the earliest. Okay. <laughs> at, the early, at the earliest is added to the motion. And there's, there's a second. second. There's a second. Member Castellanos has seconded it. Uh, requires a roll call. Mr. Castellanos? Yes. Ms. Capola? Ms. Capola? Okay. Uh, Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gailey? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Sadoway? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Member yes. Coppola, you, you were on mute. Would you like to? Uh... I got that. Yep. Okay. I thought he said March 1st. February 1st at the earliest, and then for the uh, for the testing uh, in March, correct? It's just the two well. weeks different, Lorraine, from the, the yeah. 19th that we originally said. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is a vote on, pro on the proposed 2021 budget. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the fiscal year 20 budget. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Um, I, Mr. Mayor, I just want to make sure that um, is that, a th that all of the corrections, uh, do we have to state that as well? I could add with corrections. Attorney Miles. Attorney, my house is a question related to the uh, motion on accepting the budget. I, I heard that. And just uh, the motion, including the amendments made at the last meeting. Okay. That should cover what Member Satterwhite is uh, motion. Exactly. Great. Okay. Thank you. So include that in the motion. The motion with, motion with that addition, uh, there's been a second. Um, Requires a roll call. Cassianis? Yes. Ms. Capolo? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gailey? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Fadaway? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Yes. Next on the agenda is the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, Dr. Tutwiler, would you like to take um, take us through that? Yeah, um, uh, if I may, uh, yes. just a few words on it. Uh, yep. More than a few. Uh, just want to sort of lay out uh, where we are with it. Uh, we'll all recall uh, November of 19, 2019, when Governor Baker signed uh, the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, on a high level, this act corrects decades long funding shortcomings for districts like ours in profound ways. With this historic financial commitment, the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education directed each school district to make four Student Opportunity Act commitments in order to close opportunity and achievement gaps among student subgroups. Those commitments are to first intentionally focus on student subgroups who are not achieving at the same high levels as their peers. Two, adopt, deepen, or continue specific evidence based programs to close gaps. Three, monitor success in reducing disparities. And then four, engage families, particularly those families representing student subgroups most in need of support. Uh, this past summer, I think it was uh, in uh, early to mid August, uh, and again last week, you were provided a draft plan that outlines in detail precisely how the Lynn Public Schools would fulfill those commitments with the first year of the Student Opportunity Act funding. As was communicated last year, we, in partnership with uh, community stakeholders, have engaged a robust, data-driven, 
feedback rich process. The timing of, of the signing of this bill and the required activities to develop the plan was opportune in my view. The signing of the Student Opportunity Act and the required planning process fell on the heels of the development of our strategic plan. This provided a unique opportunity for us uh, to merge deep funding with long-term strategic planning. The Student Opportunity Act plan uh, itself is somewhat lengthy, about 14, 15 pages. So I'd like to very briefly describe what it would do for the deserving students of the Lynn Public Schools uh, in the first year of it. Uh, we've consistently argued that the social, emotional, and mental health needs of students must be tended to first before there's any expectation of academic outcome. What is uh, proposed in our plan, the addition of 35 social workers and four school adjustment counselors shifts our current social worker to student ratio of one to 643 to alignment with that recommended by the National Association of so Social Workers, one to 250. This fundamental shift will allow us to create a much improved clinical model best suited to meet the needs uh, of all students in general uh, and our most needy students in particular. Uh, number two, uh, the SOA funds allow us to deepen existing evidence-based programming for two of our most underperforming subgroups, students with disabilities and English learners by significantly increasing staffing and adding or expanding new programs. With respect to special education, the plan calls for the plan details increases uh, in related service providers and special education testing professionals. These additional staff would create a more suitable uh, caseload to allow professionals to effectively provide the services outlined in a student's plan, first and foremost, and make meeting special education timelines a more realistic expectation. It will also support the expansion of universal design for learning an approach on which teachers in nine schools are currently trained. The goal is all 25. In English learner education, the funding will support maintaining reasonable student to English as a second lang language teacher caseloads, the implementation of the dual language program and related professional development. Number three, uh, research has long supported the impact of time for teachers to plan, prepare, and collaborate. The plan details the addition of a fourth prep at the elementary level. This is made possible by the addition of 16 teachers who will provide instruction on technology, lo and behold, for elementary school students. All elementary school students will have the opportunity to engage meaningfully once per week, 40 minutes for 40 minutes, with a locally developed curriculum with highly engaging topics and applicable skills. Uh, by the way, I still think this is necessary. For English learners, the technology course will provide an opportunity for engagement with tier two and three vocabulary. For the educator, this is an opportunity for outreach with family, uh, preparation of lessons, or uh, if they so choose grade or content based collaboration. Each of these activities is aligned with best practice. And then finally, uh, there's strong agreement um, uh, in, in, in the input solicited for this plan, as well as for the development of the strategic plan, that the facilities in the Lynn Public Schools are in desperate need of attention. Many respondents express limits in the ability of teachers to and students to engage in 21st century learning activities given the age of the buildings and the related limitations. In partnership with the Inspectional Services Department, a list of projects will be identified that prioritize uh, the, the safety and well-being of students and staff, first and foremost. These will be followed by those inextricably tied to the most optimal conditions for learning. Perhaps in the description, it may not be clear, but these plans represent a fundamental and comprehensive shift impacting all students in general and our most needy students in particular. The DESE guidance on the SOA plans, on the Student Opportunity Act plans, 
um, was that districts focus on doing a few things well. Not only does this propose that not only does what is proposed meet that suggestion, it also fits seamlessly into our plans to meet objectives outlined in the strategic plan. Alignment is noted in the plan as well as in the SOA at a glance document uh, that you've also been provided. The Student Opportunity Act uh, was on the agenda back in August, as I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, it was tabled because a few days or before the meeting, uh, DESE moved the deadline indicating no particular date in the future on which the plans would be due. We now know that they are due tomorrow. Uh, we're ready to submit uh, with your approval. Uh, at this point, uh, we also don't have a, an indication of a timeline or whether or not the funding is even forthcoming. What I'm asking for requesting of the committee uh, this evening is a formal approval of the plan. I suspect that when we have clarity about the potential funding amounts, we'll be given the opportunity to revisit the plan and make the necessary alterations. As a matter of fact, I know that's the case as the commissioner said so uh, in a call last week. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Member Gately, then Member Nicholson. Dr. Tutwiler, um, nice presentation. I followed you well. The only thing, I didn't hear anything about um, secondary schools on the ELs. <clears throat> um, what were you looking for in particular? Well, I, well, well actually, let me respond to that, uh, if I may. Uh, so in the document um, that you received in the SOA plan, the draft, uh, it does outline uh, the role that uh, social, emotional, and mental health, um, uh, the impact, uh, or the relationship between that and potential dropout. Uh, so we're seeing the increase in the number of social workers as, as playing a pretty significant role um, in, in uh, lowering the dropout rate at the, at the high school level, if that's what you're referring to. Um. Yeah. Well, um, and, then also, and, and then I was wondering about class sizes with the secondary, because that is my background, so I do bring that up. But sure. uh, so, so yeah, this this is not. Uh, while we are uh, grateful uh, and hopeful that um, these funds are forthcoming, uh, I'd say that there are uh, many important issues that need attention in our district. Uh, but this one, this the, in the first year, they 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 can't all be addressed, uh, and so we really that document is built squarely uh, on feedback uh, from teachers, from community, from parents, from students uh, also, uh, and we've prioritized uh, the first year on 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 that feedback, and so uh, hyper focus on uh, social emotional uh, and mental health. Uh, meeting the needs of English learners. Um, it's a big jump in special education in terms of actually getting to a place where the professionals have a fighting chance of like meeting timelines, uh, meeting uh, the minutes on the grid and a student's plan. Uh, those felt like, you know, based on the feedback and in our own thinking as well as year one things. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Member Nicholson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tawa, for that presentation. And, and thank you to you and your team for this report. Uh, I think you did a tremendous job gathering feedback, uh, walking us through this, this prioritization. I think it's a really solid blueprint for the district. And so I really appreciate your leadership there. I also just want to thank all the input uh, that we, for all the input we received from all the stakeholders involved. Uh, we were uh, had the chance to go to some a couple of those meetings and and and, and see the impact that the community was giving, um, that the students were giving, families were giving, and uh, that teachers were giving as well. I mean, I think we we uh, was really impressed by the 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 issues that that teachers were prioritizing um, and 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 the student focus um, that we all know teachers uh, bring every day to their work, and 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 uh, I think this document really reflects that. Um, so I wanted to thank those involved. I, I also just wanted to point out, and obviously, you, you know, you said this, we all know this, but, you know, I, I, I want to thank the, the, the state delegation for their 
role and, and getting uh, Lynn well represented in this important legislation. Um, and then as, as they well know, and we, as we all well know, there, there's really a lot left to do for this to become uh, what we hope it will. Uh, and and uh, there was obviously a setback that no one saw coming in the, in the economic impact of the pandemic. Uh, hopefully some hope with the, uh, what, what, what Mayor uh, McGee mentioned is, 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 is imminent in, in Washington in terms of funding. Um, and it's not, it's not just the funding of the Student Opportunity Act, the, the, the point I want to make, because I think uh, as you, one of the points that you mentioned is the focus areas was on, was on facilities. That's absolutely entirely consistent with, with the feedback we got from all stakeholders. It's consistent with what we all know and what we've seen over the years. Uh, it, it, it's also something that is going to take more than just the Student Opportunity Act, because the Student Opportunity Act is, is, is our operational funding. It's, it's the funding that we're uh, supposed to be spending on, on the annual budget as opposed to the capital funding that would be able to uh, make some of the wholesale changes that we want to see made in, in, the, in the facilities to create the learning environments that we think our, our students deserve. And so I think it's just important for us as we, as we uh, move on to the next phase of, of advocacy for, for, for meeting these needs to, to remember that that, that, that capital funding um, is, is, is key to making this, this vision become a reality. Mm -hmm. Other, other questions? Member Sadoway? I just wanted to present uh, a motion. Um, like Dr. Tuttleweiler said, this was presented some time ago, um, and I did attend one of the, 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 the community meetings. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's that time to, I think, uh, approve it so we can present it tomorrow. The motion on the table to approve the re um, uh, recommendation to accept the uh, Student Opportunity Act. Uh, second. 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 The seconds. Uh, that requires a roll call. Cassianis? Yes. Paula? Yes. Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Yes. Ms. Daly? Yes. Mr. Michelson? Yes. Satterwhite? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's evaluation. Who would like to speak to that to begin? Member Satterwhite? Um, uh, we, we had a, <laughs> uh, a heated discussion, to say the least, uh, last month with regards to, to doing the, um, the, uh, the evaluation. Um, obviously, um, um, you can see the, the satisfaction that the uh, committee has uh, for uh, Dr. Tutwiler and the work that uh, he was able to do for school year 1920, uh, which ended with the um, uh, COVID closures. Um, at that point in, in March of, of 2020, uh, we weren't a school district that um, had any experience in remote learning, um, let alone uh, equipment for um, our, our, our students or educators. So uh, I think that um, uh, Dr. Tutwiler, um, even starting in year 1920, um, when, you know, when, when this evaluation is from, uh, started making some strategic um, changes based off of data and the needs of the districts. Uh, that included the early release days that we started during that school year which was uh, made to um, bring some additional professional development um, uh, and, and other uh, uh, needs that the, the district had uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the district. Uh, we obviously uh, missed out, obviously, the, 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 the last uh, part of the year, uh, of that school year. Uh, but um, from what I could tell from, from that, um, I think that that was a, a, a a good step forward uh, for the district um, the, to allow for the collaborations and other things like that. Uh, aside from that, um, Dr. Tuttleweiler, um, you, you know, your leadership is, is, is we see it every day. Um, another thing is you bring in other people uh, to the conversation. We've seen that, um, especially during 1920, when a lot of changes were made to the district. Um, you know, our focuses uh, were around the attendance and the L students. Um, uh, it was our first full year, I believe, with the special ed educational uh, education administrator. So we were able to, to see, you know, some backlogs um, 
uh, brought up to date and whatnot. So uh, I'm very pleased with the uh, with the work that you've done over that school year, and um, uh, I think that the evaluation speaks uh, speaks to that. So thank you. Other uh, discussion, Member Nicholson. Yeah, I just I just say I mean I I, I think the the evaluation itself is self evident. There's there, there's the feedback in there, um, but I think there, there's no other way to read it. There's a really strong evaluation, and, and there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm and, and gratitude and appreciation through leadership. And I, and I think there's some some uh, great thoughts in there that's that's reflective of conversations that we've had um, throughout these meetings about uh, the the district priorities. And I think they align well with, with your priorities, your team's priorities. Uh, so, so I hope you feel good about about that document. I also wanted to thank my colleagues for the the, the time um, and insight that they that they shared in their evaluation, and 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 everyone for this for this process. I think it's uh, it, it, it's it's good for the district for us to be doing this, and and will keep us uh, moving um, on our uh, district goals for us to uh, be able to provide this kind of feedback. So, thank you, Member uh, Castellanos, then Member Ford. And just to echo my colleagues, uh, Dr. Tutwiler, it's 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 honestly been amazing to watch your leadership, um, the amount of growth since when you started your superintendent position to now. It's you 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 rise up to um, the challenge um, that when the pandemic started, it was really um, illustrated and amplified to the max. I've seen you you know you don't really stall. You are very proactive. You're mindful and. I, I say behind when we talk together on the phone, I say now we're very blessed and honored to have a superintendent like you, Dr. Totwiler, and the students and families and, and, and the teachers of this district are very, um, we're, we're, we're blessed to have you and, and the gratitude is endless and uh, your emotional intelligence really sticks out for me and you're, uh, I think one of the, one of the, I think I mentioned this in your evaluation is when um, the call for social justice, um, the advocacy that you put out there as a leader uh, was extraordinary. Um, and it really showed um, your heart and you wear it on your sleeve. And it's really, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing to witness that type of leadership. And it's honestly, it's just a true honor to work with you. And when we develop, you know, district goals and you can see, you're not just talking about it, but you're working proactively to, pro to make it come to fruition, which is, which is wonderful. So thank you, Dr. Sawala. Thank you. Number four. Yeah, I think the uh, the summative sheet shows, you know, how we feel about Dr. Tutwiler and, and the job that he's done over the last year. I, I think it was in, impossible to measure him against normal metrics, but I rated everything I wrote uh, about what he did this year was the excellent way he handled the pandemic, an unprecedented year for the school system, and I think he did an outstanding job handling that. Member Gately. Dr. Topila, the things that you had to go through this year, well, during the 1920 year with COVID-19, um, showed some glaring things we needed to fix. And you worked on that and you got in, like I told you several times, you had to move a mountain to get everyone on remote learning come this fall and you did it. I really appreciated that. Um, I see our culture and climate is really improving and that's because of your open communication with people. Um, and so I just really think that you have some things to work on, you know, your leadership is great. I wish everyone followed you in your leadership and then it would be perfect. <laughs> so thank you very much. And um, I don't know, I'm so glad we have you and let's continue our work together. Thank you. Member, Member Coppola. I think we all agree that your leadership is excellent. But, um, I, I appreciate that you are a patient person willing to learn, willing and honest about saying when things haven't gone right, and that's important instead of, uh, you know, just being in denial. Um, you're, you're very honest about um, what needs to be done and where we are, and I appreciate that. That's, um, that's really important, and I think people in the community do, 
and the parents do. And um, I feel a majority of the staff feel the same way that we do. So appreciate having you here in Lynn. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Member Coppola. Uh, Dr. Tutwiler, um, as I've, uh, I guess, figured out in my job, the, this pandemic was not part of the job description and it surely didn't come with an instruction manual. Uh, uh, but working with you through this, um, this last year uh, just exemplifies, I think, what you bring to the table from, has brought to the table from day one as superintendent. You've been a pleasure to work with, uh, and I know that the feeling throughout the community as well as outside the community, because I, I hear from um, other mayors, uh, and I know that you're very involved in the superintendent's organization uh, in terms of your leadership and uh, guidance through that uh, group of uh, leaders uh, throughout the state. So uh, I think the evaluation reflects uh, the work you do the, the, the high uh, respect that many people that we all have in your work and uh, clearly in the most challenging times that we've faced in, in 100 years, uh, you've been able to, um, with your team and with the support of the school committee, really have helped guide us through this and continue as this evolves and make tough decisions, even as we're making them tonight to extend out what we want to do to ensure that all the students have an opportunity for the best education. Uh, the decisions that get made reflect uh, uh, the reality of the situation and the best possible uh, direction to find the right outcome. So it's been great to work with you and uh, I think the evaluation reflects uh, the great work you're doing for the community and it's um, uh, we're really lucky to have you uh, working with us uh, through these challenging times and on to hopefully better times uh, moving through 2021. Uh, any other discussion? Um, uh, Dr. Tawala? Yeah, just, just, just quickly. Th I first want to um express my thanks uh to the entire committee uh i think the last time we, we we talked about this i talked about the fact that uh I, you know the person who's going to benefit most from the feedback uh in the evaluation is me uh, and i take it seriously i really do um solicit you know sincerely uh feedback from folks and i try to uh, use it as a, a means to to do better uh, and so I'll just go back to what uh, Member Gately said uh, about, you know, there's some things you need to work on. Uh, you know, some people might turn their nose up at that, but I don't. Uh, and actually one of the things, and I've probably said it here before, that I really love about education is that nobody ever arrives uh, in, this, in this profession. You're, you're constantly learning, constantly uh, assessing, constantly figuring out ways to do things better. Um, you know, and be more impactful for students. And so uh, that, that is um, how I feel uh, to my core. And so uh, when it's said that you got some things you got to work on, know that I, I take that seriously. And then I also just want to say that, um, you know, I, I didn't do this by myself. Uh, you know, I've got um, some members on, on the, the, the camera right now, on, the, on this call right now, Kim, Deb, Kevin, uh, an entire group of, of just incredible professionals who make things happen. Sometimes the best thing I can do is just get out of their way, uh, really. Uh, and so um, uh, really when I, when I hear you, uh, you know, speaking in such positive terms, it's them that I'm thinking about and the work that they've done. So with that. Thank you, Dr. Tutwell. Let's move on because one bad decision I made was to stand during this meeting and now my back is killing me. <laughs> Let's keep going. We'll get moving. So is this something that we need to vote on to accept or is this just submitted? I think we voted in the past. Yeah, I think we have to vote to accept it, yeah. Okay, that was my understanding too. So, uh, Member Sadaway? Thank you. Uh, and I just wanted to, to put out there, Patrick, um, you know, people see our meetings and they think that we only talk a couple times a month. But you have, uh, you know, seven of us that communicate with you often. And I, I also want to say that I, I've witnessed you and your intern, um, Danny, mm -hmm. and the way you treat uh, people even outside of the organization uh, and people that are learning is, is admirable. And I, 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 I wish he was here to, to back that up, but it's, it's awesome. So I, I'm happy to put forth the, 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 the motion uh, to accept and approve the evaluation of Dr. Tawala. Second. Second. The second requires a roll call. Cassianis? Yes. Mr. Paula? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Mr. Gately? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Sadaway? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. 
Next on the agenda is uh, uh, to go into executive session relative to contract negotiations with non-union personnel, um, as well as to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining relative to administration association and nurses local 3147A contracts. Um, is there a motion to go into executive session for those purposes? Motion. Satellite? Motion for those purposes. Okay. There is a second requires a roll call. Cassianus? Yes. Paula? Yes. Wood? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Nicholson? Yes. Bradway? Yes. Nemegi? Yes. Dr. Tutwiley, do your magic and bring us to the All other right. side. I think I got everybody. Let's see if this works. I'm on first is to uh, a motion to come back into um, the, motion to uh, go into regular session. Second. Regular. There's a second it requires a roll call. It's 8.32 noon. <laughs> I think all the members are here, correct? Yep. I see Donna uh, as well. Uh -huh. What time? It's 8.30. It's 8.28. All right, here we go. Ms. Cassianis? Ms. Paula? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Satterwhite? Yes. Ms. Mayor McGee? Yes. Uh, motion, uh, yes, Member Satterwhite. Uh, I'd like to put forward a motion to ratify the votes that were t uh, taken um, for two out of the three. <laughs> Um, which involved the uh, administrator's contract, which um, uh, it mirrors the, the teachers' union, uh, which is good through February uh, 21st, and the uh, non-union personnel uh, involved in the superintendent of schools, uh, Dr. Tutwiler, uh, where the contract was approved for five years at a salary of $230,000 with that contract to be signed at our, our next meeting. Okay, so that motion is on the table. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, re requires a roll call. I am on eight for that, here we go. Ms. Cassianis? Yes. Ms. Paula? Yes. Ms. Paula? Yes. Ms. Gately? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Satellite? Yes. Ms. McGee? Yes. Mayor, I'd like to make a proposal to the memorandum agreement between the Lynn School Committee and the ASME Council 93 Local 3147 in regards to the Lynn, uh, Lynn, Lynn Public Schools nurses. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, requires a roll call. Ms. Cassianis? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gately? Ms. Gately? Yes. Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Satterwhite? No vote. No vote. Thank you. Mayor McGee? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, there is one uh, more agenda item. Superintendent's report. Dr. Tutwiler, would you uh, like to... Uh, Speak to that. It's the final agenda item. I would um, just quickly. Um, you know, we we we're, we're just into um, the second full week of the of 2021 uh, of the new year, and typically around this time, I mean, we just approved the budget for the current year, but we're usually in the process of preparing the budget for uh, the ensuing year. Um, but I, I did something on this superintendent's report that I don't normally do uh, and probably won't continue to do, but uh, there's a quote um, that I put atop that I'll just read really quickly. It's one sentence. Don't wait until the conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. Uh, and I really felt like that captured uh, where the leadership team is with its thinking uh, about next year and all of the possibilities um, for enhancing and improving the student experience. I really look forward to the months ahead uh, to present uh, to the school committee uh, the ideas that are floating to the top uh, about uh, the possibilities for 
uh, the 2021-22 uh, school year. It's a longer document, but I'll spare you the uh, I'll spare you the uh, reading it. That's thank you, sense. thank you. And just one final point on the budget. Uh, the department had a meeting today uh, with the um, CFO spoke to the budget. We anticipate a more, uh, hopefully, more normal budget process through this year uh, for 2022. Um, and uh, I think we're uh, we're feeling that that's, you know, we're not sure what the dollars will be, but we anticipate it'll be much more of a, uh, a timely document working through our budget as well as for the state. So um, hopefully we won't be approving our budget next January for 2022, and I don't anticipate we will. So with that, uh, thank you all for the work tonight. Uh, no other um, agenda items? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn is a second. Uh, we re requires a roll call. Yes. Yes. Mr. Carla. Yes. Mr. Ford. Yes. Mr. Gately. Yes. Mr. Nicholson. Yes. Mr. Satellite. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. That was two hours, Patrick. Not three. <laughs> it still hurts, but it's all good. I right, get the end of Tax ready for arrest. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm on first is to uh, a motion to come back into um, the, motion to uh, go into regular session. Second. Regular. There's a second and requires a roll call. It's 8:32, Nan. <laughs> I think all the members are here, correct? Yep. I see Donna around as well. Uh huh. What time? It's 8:30. 8:28. All right, here we go. Ms. Cassianis. Ms. Paula? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Satterwhite? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Uh, motion, uh, yes, Member Satterwhite. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, put forward a motion to ratify the votes that were t uh, taken um, for two out of the three. Um, which involved the uh, administrator's contract, which um, uh, it mirrors the, the teacher's union, uh, which is good through February uh, 21st, and the uh, non-union personnel uh, involved in the superintendent of schools, uh, Dr. Tut Weiler, uh, where the contract was approved for five years at a salary of $230,000 with that contract to be signed at our, our next meeting. Okay, so that motion is on the table. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, re requires a roll call. I am on eight for nine, here we go. Ms. Cassianis? Yes. Ms. Paula? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gately? Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Satellite? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor, I'd like to make a proposal to the memorandum agreement between the Lynn School Committee and the ASME Council 93 Local 3147 in regards to the Lynn, uh, T Lynn, Lynn Public Schools nurses. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, requires a roll call. Ms. Cassianis? Yes. Ms. Capola? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. Ms. Gately? Ms. Gately? Yes. Yes. Mr. Nicholson? Yes. Mr. Satterwhite? No vote. No vote. Thank you. Mayor McGee? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, there is one uh, more agenda item. Superintendent's report. Dr. Tutwiler, would you uh, like to... Uh, Speak to that. It's the final agenda item. I would um, just quickly. Um, you know, we we we're, we're just into um, the second full week of the of 2021 uh, of the new year, and typically around this time, I mean, we just approved the budget for the current year, but we're usually in the process of preparing a budget for uh, the ensuing year. Um, but I, I did something on this superintendent's report that I don't normally do uh, and probably won't continue to do, but 
Uh, there's a quote um, that I put atop that I'll just read really quickly. It's one sentence. Don't wait until the conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. Uh, and I really felt like that captured uh, where the leadership team is with its thinking uh, about next year and all of the possibilities um, for enhancing and improving the student experience. I really look forward to the months ahead uh, to present uh, to the school committee uh, the ideas that are floating to the top uh, about uh, the possibilities for uh, the 2021-22 20, uh, school year. It's a longer document, but I'll spare you the uh, I'll spare you the uh, reading it. That's thank you, thank you. And just one final point on the budget. Uh, the department had meeting today uh, with the um, CFO spoke to the budget. We anticipate a more uh, hopefully more normal budget process through this year uh, for 2022. Um, and uh, I think we're. Uh, we're feeling that that's, you know, we're not sure what the dollars will be, but we anticipate it'll be much more of a, uh, a timely document working through our budget as well as for the state. So um, hopefully we won't be approving our budget next January for 2022, and I don't anticipate we will. So with that, uh, thank you all for the work tonight. Uh, no other um, agenda items? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. There's a second. Uh, we re require a roll call. Yes. Yes. Ms. Carla. Yes. Mr. Ford. Yes. Mr. Gately. Yes. Mr. Nicholson. Yes. Mr. Satellite. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. That was two hours, Patrick. Not three. <laughs> it still hurts, but it's all good. If I get the end of Thanks, ready for a rest. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.